In this recording, we shall have a look at a second example of partial fractions, remembering that these are applicable when we have a proper rational function with the degree of the numerator expression p of x less than the degree of the denominator expression q of x, and we want to rewrite this in partial fractions. And first, if it is not already in that form, we factorise q of x into a product of linear and or irreducible quadratic factors. And in this second example, we are going to have a look at a case where we have both a single linear factor and a repeated linear factor. So for single linear factors, they correspond to a partial fraction of a form constant divided by the linear factor. Whereas when we have a repeated linear factor, that is a factor to the power of m, it will be a constant divided by the factor to the power of 1 plus another constant divided by the factor squared, continuing on in that way up to a constant divided by the factor to the power of m at which it actually appears in the original function. So let's apply this to an example. And so let's consider rewriting the expression 7x squared minus 7x minus 6 divided by x minus 1 squared times x plus 2. So just rewrite that expression again on the left. So let's look at each of the factors. This has already been factorised as much as possible on the denominator. So x minus 1 squared is a repeated linear factor. So it needs to be a constant, which I'll call a, times x minus 1 plus another constant b times x minus 1 squared. And since squaring is in fact the power, we will stop there. But suppose it had been x minus 1 cubed, there would have been another constant c, for instance, divided by x minus 1 cubed. Now we look at the other factor, which is x plus 2. That is just a single linear factor, so that will be another constant c, let's say, divided by x plus 2. Now we need to multiply both sides by the denominator of our original expression on the left. That is, multiply both sides by x minus 1 squared times x plus 2. And this will lead to a bit of cancelling. It will just leave us with 7x squared minus 7x minus 6 on the left. a times x minus 1 on the denominator here will cancel with one of the x minus 1 factors there, leaving a x minus 1, x plus 2 b x minus 1 squared, so that x minus 1 squared will cancel with x minus 1 squared here, simply leaving b x plus 2, and c, since that was divided by x plus 2, that will cancel with x plus 2 here when we multiply through, leaving us with c x minus 1 squared. And we now need to find a, b, and c. And as when we just have a single linear factor, we look to see if there are any values of x that we can put in to cancel out some of these expressions. And since we have a factor of x minus 1, if we put in x equals 1, that will give 1 minus 1 is 0, wherever that occurs, which will make our expression simpler. So putting that in, the left will become 7 times 1 squared minus 7 times 1 minus 6, and on the right hand side we will get a times 1 minus 1, 1 plus 2, plus b times 1 plus 2, plus c times 1 minus 1 squared. So this first term and this last one on the right will cancel, leaving us with 7 times 1 squared is just 7, minus 7, that becomes 0, minus 6 gives negative 6, and on the right we're just left with b times 1 plus 2, so that's leaving us with 3b on the right. So negative 6 equals 3b, that implies that b is equal to negative 2. 
Similarly, since our expanded expression here, which I've put a box around, contains an x plus 2, if we put in x equals negative 2, that will also help to cancel some things out. So on the left, 7 times negative 2 squared, minus 7 times negative 2, minus 6. On the right, a times negative 2 minus 1, negative 2 plus 2 plus b times negative 2 plus 2 plus c times negative 2 minus 1 squared. So what have we got on the left? Negative 2 squared is 4, 7 fours are 28. Negative 7 times negative 2, that will become positive 14, and that minus 6. What's going to happen on the right? That first term involving a has a negative 2 plus 2, so that's 0. The next term involving b also includes that, that's 0. Leaving us with c, lots of negative 2, minus 1 squared, or c, lots of negative 3 squared. This simplifies to give us 36 on the left and 9c on the right which shows us c is equal to 4. So we're doing quite well here. We've found what b and c are, but now we've run out of values of x to put in that will make terms cancel. So there's a couple of possible ways we could find a. And the method I will use here is let's substitute in the values of b and c we already have, and then just pick any other value of x in order to allow us to find a. But in a third example of partial fractions, I'll show another method you can use, what's called equating coefficients. But in this case, as we said, using the first method, just rewriting it, write it in red just to make it distinctive. We don't know what a is, so that first bit's going to be a x minus 1, x plus 2. But we know b is negative 2, so that'll become minus 2 lots of x plus 2. And then we also know that c is 4, so that's going to become plus 4 lots of x minus 1 squared. So now let's pick any value of x to sub into that, and then we'll rearrange it for a. And a nice simple value of x would just be x equals 0, for instance, but you could have picked another value too. So 7 times 0 squared minus 7 times 0 minus 6 on the left. That will become a lots of 0 minus 1, which is just negative 1, times 0 plus 2, which is 2, minus 2 lots of 0 plus 2, and plus 4 lots of 0 minus 1 squared. Simplifying this, we end up with negative 6 on the left, and we end up with negative 2a minus 4 plus 4 on the right. And so that just gives us negative 6 equals negative 2a, which implies that a is equal to 3. So summarising what we have found so far, this is the way we discovered we need to rewrite this. And we've now found the values of a, b and c. So finally, we can simply substitute them in to get our expression in partial fractions form. So a on x minus 1 becomes 3 divided by x minus 1. b on x minus 1 squared, that will all become minus 2 divided by x minus 1 squared. And then the last term will become plus 4 divided by x plus 2. So that is the second example of partial fractions one where there is both a single linear factor and a repeated linear factor.